new favorite spot in the house. Ooh, I do see how it could get dirty in there. Oh my gosh, that one smells so good. I'm just wanting to diffuse a little bit of stuff today. Did I just feel that everywhere? Because I'm needing a little bit of an uplifting feeling. Even though these diffusers don't promise to like uplift or put you in a positive mood or keep you mindful and all that good stuff. They do smell really great and that's my favorite thing about them. The haunted one that was in there, one of my faves. This is a completely different scent. It's the Polynesian. Also one of my faves. Oh my, already just seeing that. I'm like uplifted. Isn't it pretty? Oh my gosh, and the scent, yeah, it's incredible. So today I've got a lot to do per the usual. Something is up with my phone. I tried to call to make a, an eye appointment this morning at Costco. I had to call, I'm not being dramatic, seven different times. They couldn't hear me. They weren't answering and then they would call back. Oh, sorry, you're not, I don't know. I kept getting disconnected. And now it's like not sending text messages. Anyway. The kids have a lot going on. One of them has a rehearsal today. I just dropped her off. They have dental appointments today. So fun. All of them. We like to do it all in one fell swoop, which reminds me, I have yet to schedule their yearly physicals, which I normally do in January, after they all age up after the holidays, you know? Oh, wow, I'm just a little bit behind this year. Oh, I've got some returns to make. I bought Eleanor new shoes. Why? Her shoes have like a hole in them? Like, why didn't you tell me? I mean, obviously she has more than one pair, but this one specific pair she enjoys the most and they're falling apart, so I ordered two new pairs of shoes for her, one from DSW, one from Amazon, and they don't fit her. So I have to exchange them so I have some Amazon returns to make. I don't even know if I'm gonna get to that stuff today, but I have to clean some stuff. I've got to restock some stuff. I've gotta make dinner. And then I was browsing Pinterest looking for recipes to make for our picnic family get together this weekend. And while I was going through Pinterest, I was seeing a lot of recipes that I feel like I'm like, like trapped right here. I gotta go. All right, a little better. I was browsing the recipes and I got really inspired to make some. So I don't know if I'll get to it, but lemon blueberry breakfast bake, some oat cups. Oh, I remember I made those once and I love them. Dinner, I still have no idea what's for dinner. It's the age old question and I don't feel like answering it right now. I'll figure it out. Last night, we went to Raisin Cane's. I'll talk about more about that later. I just got a package in the mail and it was you. It was you. It was my camera. My camera broke. It's a really long story. And another package came in the mail. So let me share that with you before we do anything else. It's actually really heavy. I forgot what I ordered in my late night scrolling grocery shopping. It's my Thrive Market order and I am officially out of breath. I forgot I did French braids this morning because I wanted to wear a hat. I'm a little self-conscious about how greasy my hair is because while I've been showering, I haven't been washing my hair because I have like some wounds on my hand. That's a whole other story. So I don't wanna be like sitting there washing, so I just have been washing my body. I guess I could wash my hand with one. I don't know, I'm nasty, I guess. But anyway, this video is kindly sponsored by Thrive Market. You guys know how much I love them. Huge thanks to them for supporting me. Massive thanks to you for supporting me when I have sponsored content, for real. Let's see what I ordered this time. Thrive Market is an online grocery store. They sell more than groceries. I get a lot of cleaning products from them. I get a lot of pantry staples from them. They have bags and beauty and home items too. Oh my gosh, and then healthy snack options. I got a lot. Of, they make it so easy to make those healthy swaps because what Thrive Market is all about is healthy living and making it easy and affordable for everyone. And that's exactly what they do. Not only that, but they have such a wide range of products because when I go to my local grocery store and I'm looking for like healthier options, they have nothing compared to what Thrive Market offers. Not only do they have a ton of different brands, but you know they're good quality brands. They're sustainable, they're organic, non-GMO. And not only is it better for us, and our wallet, it's better for the environment. They ship from a zero waste warehouse and they have carbon neutral shipping. So I always feel really good about the purchases that I make from Thrive Market. On you guys, I got all the snacks. Oh yes, and all the cleaning products. They sell Blue Land on there, which I love, another eco-friendly brand that is more plant-based. Thrive also has their Rosie brand, so I stocked up. They had a lot of sales going on. They always have sales going on on the website. So I like to browse their deals and they were having a really good Good deal on dish soap, so I like to stock up on that. Ooh, Molly Suds. This is another one of my favorite go-to products. It's a sink cleaner. And then, of course, all the kids' snacks. Bar. Ooh, I 
I've been waiting to try these. These have been out of stock, so I'm so happy about it. Listen, so it is a membership-based market. Memberships are as low as $60 a year, so it comes down to about $5 a month, or you can do it monthly at $12 a month, but wait. First of all, you're gonna save that tenfold in the money that you save on these products because they're more affordable on Thrive Market than they are at your normal grocery store. And if they're not, they price match. Not only that, but if you have a yearly membership and you don't save $60 a year, which is what the membership costs, they will credit you the difference, but I promise you, you will save that because this is how much I saved in just this order alone, which is wild and crazy. And it's just stuff that I buy all the time and it's convenient. I can shop on the app on my phone, add to cart when I remember to do it. And then it shows up on my doorstep a couple of days later. And hey, they had some oat nog left over from holidays. Bee pollen. I forgot I put this in my cart. So this is a really fancy, exciting product. By the way, they offer free shipping if you have an order over $50. And I always make sure to reach that threshold. So if you're looking to save money on groceries, now is your chance. You can save 30% on your first order and get a free gift if you use my code, the wads, thrivemarket.com slash the wads and stock up on stuff that you need and save 30%. It makes sense, doesn't it? I've actually been waiting to try these because Jessica Braun keeps talking about them. The Caramel Peanut Butter Paradise. Two grams of sugar per cup. Yes, please. I have so much to do. I shouldn't be wasting my time eating this, but here I go. It does in fact taste like paradise. I love to throw these in my kids' lunches too because two grams of sugar, you can't beat it. If you're wondering what happened to my hand, got in a little fight with my serrated bread cutco knife and I did lose. <laughs> I had the baby on the counter, he reached for the knife and I, without thinking, I just said no and I grabbed it and he said yes, like a violin style and I said no. Oh! blood everywhere. It was a good time. All right, I have to figure out what's for dinner. Last night for dinner, we brought Avelina out as like a date night because she got into the National Junior Honor Society a few months ago and we said, oh, we need to celebrate you. Where do you want to go out to eat? And of course she wanted to go like clear across town to some fast food restaurant called Raising Cane's. Have you ever wasted your time going to Raising Cane's? Of course we went there because that's what she wanted. So we said, okay, anything you want. Let me put these away as I talk to you about it. I might put some of this stuff in the movie snack upstairs. Anyway, if you're unfamiliar, Raising Cane's is essentially a PBQ, just with random food. They had Texas toast, chicken fingers, or whatever the heck they're called, chicken strips. The fries were miserable. Like if I were to buy frozen crinkle cut fries from a grocery store and halfway cook them, <laughs> I thought maybe we got a bad batch, but I posted on Instagram and some people were like, their fries are flimsy. And I said, why is this place a thing? But Avelina liked it, so that's what it was all about. Their sauce is good, I will give that to them. And I'm not even like a saucy gal. And then after we went to Raising Cane's, we said, well, what else do you wanna do? And the Super Target just happened to be right there. And I was like, oh, the, Super Target is right there. And well, she's a Starbucks girly. Not that she ever gets it. It's like maybe twice a year she'll have it as a treat. So we browsed around and she ended up getting Apple ear pods, like the nice ones. She's had a pair of Apple ear pods. I think Alex's old pair. We were worried like, oh, they're so small. Maybe she'll misplace them. No, she's super responsible. We should have known. She's a straight A student since like the day she was born and the ear pods happened to be on sale. So it just worked out. We really only went there for her to get a bathing suit. Anyway, these are fantastic by the way. I didn't get anything from Target. I did, I mean, pineapple and cantaloupe and boring stuff. All right, Eleanor is home. She is stuffed to the rafters. I just talked to her about what I'm gonna make a blueberry breakfast bake or the oatmeal things. I might just make them both at the same time here. Not the same time, but you know, at the same. Before I do anything else, if I find the recipe. And then this. I can never decide. Amazing banana bread cake, please. What did I say I was making? 452 reviews, all from me. It's been a really long time since I made this. Oh, buttermilk. Ugh, I might have some buttermilk. Rats. I don't, I thought it did, but it must have gone bad, which is kind of ironic because isn't it like bad? And it's like cheese going bad, but it's cheese is just, all of that stuff is over my head. Cheese, yogurt, buttermilk, it's gross. I do have whole milk that is expiring. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. I've made this before with almond milk and I think it's fine. Think I got it all? Let's ignore the fact that my house is in a state of destruction and throw together this blueberry breakfast bake. Also known as blueberry breakfast cake because it has two 
sticks of butter. You know you can replace, I think in any recipe, half of the butter with applesauce? Yeah, it's normally oil, but same thing, right? I'm obviously not going to. <laughs> because why mess with perfection? So I have flour, blueberries, half and half. I'm gonna make my own buttermilk, even with half and half, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of lemon juice in with half and half, and it like curdles it and basically makes it buttermilk. I've got sugar, butter, lemons, baking powder, egg. Did I cover all my bases? Pretty simple. The ingredient list is different from what the recipe calls for. The recipe is just saying I only need one stick of butter, so if that makes you feel better about life. I definitely need to clean my microwave today. It smells like hot dogs and it looks horrible. And I couldn't tell you the last time we had a hot dog, okay? Half a cup of butter, so one stick. To that, I'm going to add the zest of one lemon. This is just, listen, it elevates every dish. Fresh citrus, fresh herbs. This is going to be the best breakfast I've had in a really long time. I feel like I got more zest from the lime I did the other day. That's a little pitiful. And then one cup of sugar, blend that all together. While that's whipping, I need half a cup of buttermilk. I'm gonna take the juice from the lime or lemon I just zested and let this sit while I finish the rest. <laughs> Great. Just let that sit. All right, I think this is looking nice and fluffy. So I'm going to add a couple splashes of vanilla and one egg, no shells. Mix that up. I forgot how simple this was. So add in two cups of flour, kind of. So like one and three quarters cup and reserve about a quarter cup of it to toss the blueberries in. And I know I told you guys this before, but this just makes sure that the blueberries don't fall to the bottom. It actually works in this one, or it has in the past, who the heck knows this time around, but it did not work in my pancake recipe. <laughs> so that looks good. Two teaspoons of baking powder and a little bit of salt to enhance the flavor. I'm gonna mix this in and then drizzle in the buttermilk as this is go, oh, see how chunky that is? Do you see how gross and chunky monkey that is? All right, toss it all in. It is a very thick batter, so don't be alarmed. Oh, this is the best. I also have a really good blueberry muffin recipe. I haven't made that in years either. And I'm just gonna fold in all of the blueberries. This is a work of art. Am I right? Somebody call the Food Network. Somebody call an art gallery. Sign me up. Why does food always look so scrumptious? Fold these beauties in, oh so gently, even though they're gonna burst in the oven. This looks so good, and of course, you have to try the batter because salmonella, I dare you. Honestly, it's the best part of anything. It's so good. It calls for an eight by eight inch dish. I don't know where mine is. Probably has some leftovers in it. Maybe it's in the dishwasher. No, maybe it's in the sink. No, I don't know. I'm gonna look for like four more seconds and then I'm over it. All right, I'll do this one since it's slightly smaller. This is nine by seven. Check out this cool new sprayer I got. I'm gonna grease the bottom of this pan and I'm going to dump the rest of this blueberry bake in here and oh my gosh, this filling is so good. I'm sure you can make muffins out of this too. Like the world is your oyster, it's gonna taste Delicious no matter how you make it. I would maybe prefer muffins, but definitely an eight by eight pan. The smaller the better, in my opinion, because if it's thicker, it's just everything tastes better when it's. Honestly, leave this in your fridge and just munch on the batter every time you open it. That would make me happy. We're not done yet. I'm gonna lick the spatula. It's so good. I'm gonna get salmonella. Did you eat that? I'm gonna take the tablespoon of sugar and just sprinkle it on top. I'm just gonna pop this in the oven, 350 I think, for 30, 35 minutes. Got a little baker over here. <laughs> yeah, 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 blueberry cake and all that good stuff. Hey, did you also spend your morning slash all weekend listening to the Tortured Poets Department by Taylor Swift? Oh my gosh. There's like 30 songs. It's insane. How am I going to, you know, figure out which one is my favorite? Do you have a favorite? because I need to be persuaded one way. There are so, oh my gosh, there are so many good ones. I spent so, too much time probably listening while also reading the lyrics and I'm just like broken, every piece of me. She is a poet. She's a legend. Amazing, incredible, just 
all around. Almost as good as this blueberry breakfast bake. I don't know why it's called a breakfast bake or a breakfast cake. Eat it. Breakfast, noon, lunch, dinner, dessert. I don't know. I think it's a dessert, actually. I'm going to move on to the no-bake peanut butter oat cups that I talked about. I have two cups of quick cooking oats, and I actually just have normal oats, and I blended them up in the bullet, which I highly do not recommend. It was not a good idea. But that's what I did. To this, I'm going to add one third cup of peanut butter. I'm gonna spray this measuring cup so the honey comes out of it. Half a cup of honey going, ooh, look at it slide out like butter. Smooth like butter, yeah. Semana undercover, yeah. I have less than a third cup of peanuts. And I just have the, I don't know, I had them in my pantry. I feel like last time I didn't even add these. These are just dry roasted honey something. I chopped those up. I'm just gonna mix this all together. I just have a mini muffin pan and I've got some silicone liners. I don't know, I was gonna you do the big pan but I feel like a little snack is good enough. And I actually don't even have a silicone muffin pan, which I thought, I don't know, I guess I never bought one. These are kind of a pain to wash, but also cloth diapers are a pain to wash, and I did that for, I don't know, 12 years of my life. So I'm just gonna line the pan and then fill it up with the oat mixture. And there's three layers to this. Three whole dang layers, and I don't know if I said this last time I made it, but I, please remind me, don't make this again. Not that it doesn't taste good, it's just so time consuming. I could make so many other things in the span of time it takes me to create this. Or, you know what? Make bars. That's probably a better option. Just make, you just put it in bar form, in a dish, you know? Like granola bar style. Anyway, that's not what I did. I spent way too much time portioning this out into little bins or tins. The middle layer is just chocolate, so I had some melting chocolate. I put a little bit of coconut oil in there to make it melt nicely, which I don't even think that was necessary, but I did it, and then I have to wash my dish, my pan, oh, and all these silicone cups. Listen, it's good, but like, ugh, is it worth all the time, effort, energy, effort, all that good stuff? I would say no, but the top layer is peanut butter with a little bit of coconut oil. I microwaved that put it over the top, sprinkled it with a couple mini chocolate chips, and boom, have a little treat there for me. The kids do enjoy them, but I don't, I don't. I'd rather eat, like, make the monster bites. You know what I mean? The ones that I always make, the protein ones. And by the way, those are packed with protein and these aren't. So just pros and cons all around. It's good to switch things up every once in a while and remind me why I do the things that I do normally, like the monster bites. This microwave, while I was microwaving the you know, things for those cups. I noticed, wow, it's disgusting and I need to clean it. So that's exactly what I did. I just went in there with this cleaner. I mean, any cleaner that you have really. Just some good elbow grease will fix any situation and clean the plate off when we're good to go. Like, oh, wow, look at that after, you know what I mean? Only took about four seconds of my time after two months of not doing it. I exaggerate, but I mean, has it been two months? Time does fly, so maybe. And then off to cleaning the rest of the kitchen. I don't know why, but I have not been keeping up on cleaning my kitchen. Oh, I don't know what to do. Every time I go in there, it's a mess. And there's a lot of us, so someone is always like eating something. So the kitchen is most of the time has, you know, stuff all over it. But for whatever reason, even after dinners, I haven't been good, like, I'll do 90% of it and then leave something out. I haven't been good about, I need to be better. How about that? I need to be better about tidying up the kitchen fully. It's hard to say. I say that with a pause because I'm like, I do my best, you know, which I guess is all that I can do. Some days are better than others. Let's do, let's just say that. And uh, yeah, I know I need to pull out the vacuum I've actually been pretty good about, you know, cleaning the floor. Well, I say that and I'm like, have I been? <laughs> I don't know. I've been doing my best cleaning the floors. I normally drag out the Bissell and um, I just like deep cleaned the Bissell cleaner, which is the mop and, you know, vacuum all in one. And I deep cleaned it the other day. So I was like, I don't want to pull it out and then have to clean it all over again just to do my kitchen because I know I knew I wasn't going to do all of my floors just then. And then I ended up vacuuming more areas in my house. So then I thought, well, I should have just pulled it out. But alas, I didn't. I'm loading up the dishwasher now. 
I think this is like leftover from the night before, you know, or is, I mean, I know these aren't all the dishes, but alas, such is life and all of that good stuff. And I'm glad we can tackle these chores together and get them done. And so I'm, you know, I'm not doing them alone and hopefully I'm keeping you company while you get some stuff done too. And even if you're not doing anything done, hey, thanks for hanging out with me because you are my best friend. You're my best friend here. (laughs) Have you guys seen, um... I think you should leave. It's just so funny. Oh my gosh. And then this bread knife almost fell out and I had to catch it. Oh, it almost got me again. The dang bread knife. I don't know what to do with it. It's actually my favorite knife, but it wounded me. So now I have a little disdain toward it. Okay. Anyway, what are you guys doing for the weekend? I'm trying to finish things up around the house and um, get some grocery shopping done for our picnic um, family dinner I, I'm having a lot of trouble saying this. What am I trying to say? Our monthly family get together. We typically have dinner or lunch or whatever. It's normally midday. We just call it dinner. And because uh, we usually have enough food for us to eat like twice <laughs> and then bring some home too. So this month's theme is picnic theme. And for whatever reason, I think it's like after the holidays. And I kind of feel like everything's settling down before summer. And I'm so pumped about this theme. It's picnic day because the day we're having it on, I guess, is a couple days before National Picnic Day or whatever. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know it was a day. And apparently it is. So I am really excited for the recipes that I have picked out. I might cook them with you. I haven't decided yet. I'm saying that with with a question mark. I haven't even gone grocery shopping yet. We're going to Bush Gardens in a little bit. It'll be a day and a half. And then tomorrow I'll have like two hours to cook everything before we leave. So... I don't, I don't, time will tell, okay? But I will share pictures at the very least on Instagram. So check me out there. And I just cleaned my sink with the Molly's Sud Scrub. I forgot how much I love that stuff. The Molly's Suds Citrus Sink Scrub. Say that five times fast. Molly Suds Citrus Sink Scrub. Can't do it. Can't even do it once. Molly Suds Citrus Sink Scrub. Molly Suds Citrus Sink Scrubs. Molly Suds Citrus Sink Scrub. Nope. Can't even do it. <laughs> I can do it slow, but not fast. Anyway, this stuff smells like Fruity Loops, and it's incredible. I love it very much. I have. It's been a while since I got the citrus one because in the um, you know previously I got the I forgot what it's called winter something another great scent, but the citrus smells like fruit. I mean, it's just so nostalgic for me. Not that I even love Fruit Loops or whatever. Actually, there was a moment in time probably in college because I couldn't afford much where I would just buy the family size box of Fruit Loops, which listen, you can't do that nowadays. It's like $12 for a box of cereal. It's insane. But back in the day, it was more affordable and I would just live off of Fruit Loops. It did turn my um, feces green. I was going to say excrement. I don't know of like a non-gruesome way to say poop. Turned it green, and I thought, is there something wrong with me? Yes, there is. I was eating too many Fruit Loops. (laughs) Okay, that's probably the last time I had Fruit Loops because I thought, well, this probably isn't good for me. Anyway, I'm tidying up a couple of areas around our house before I leave to go to the, you know, bring all the kids to the dentist. Alex had left with the older kids. We were trying to split it up, divide and conquer and like have them get done first. And then I'll bring the little ones and then the dentist can see everyone at the same time kind of thing. We're trying to just get it done. Right. And so I thought, well, before I leave, I might as well just tidy up the house a little bit and give it a nice clean so we can come home to a a clean house. And the other day I saw, I saw on Instagram, it was a video of someone's like son going inside their house, sending a video to the, his parents of the state of their house. And I guess the roof had fallen in. There was a storm, maybe a tree cloud. I don't know what happened, but their house was completely like flooded and destroyed. And one of the top comments was, I bet she cleaned the house before she left because she was hoping to come home to a clean house. And that's all I could think about. It's like, oh my gosh, natural disasters are just so horrible. I actually don't know if it was a natural disaster or if there was a flood upstairs and it like just flooded her roof line and her house. I'm not sure. The details are kind of irrelevant But I mean, obviously not for her (laughs) and him and their family because horrible. But this sentiment is tidy before you leave. So you get to come home to something tidy, hopefully. Right. Fingers crossed. Anyway, moving into my dining room. I'm cleaning up the wall where Wolfgang throws his All right, laundry time. Came back from the dentist. Is this? 
unwashed. Oh my gosh, so embarrassing. First of all, cavity free for everyone. Woo -woo. So we celebrated by getting ice cream. Ice cream. Anyway, check my band-aid. <laughs> How embarrassing is this? Anyway, just imagine this ridiculous band-aid. I'm sitting there like trying to fight a fuzzy baby. Open up! Up is like flopping around everywhere. So embarrassing. You know, I'm just trying to stay up on the laundry. So I'm gonna throw a load in. It looks like there's a load that needs to be folded, but other than that, I feel like it's not so bad. It definitely seen worse. Got no dancing shoes. I've been trying to use this powder. It's for like athletic wear. I don't know if it's any more effective than anything else I've used. I feel like it's all the same crap. You know what's all the same? The things that I do around the house every day. <laughs> do you feel that way? Monotonous? You know, all this stuff that needs to be done constant. It's constant. It's the mental load of, oh my gosh, always laundry, food, cleaning, errands. What a wonderful life. The kids have off of school for the next couple of days. And I think tomorrow we're going to go to Adventure Island or Bush Gardens or something. Do something fun with them because it'll be during a weekday. It's better than going on a weekend where we feel like it'll just be more crowded. But since they don't have school... I don't go to the gym because it's just, it, it, I just don't for a lot of reasons. And it made me think of this summer because weird enough as it is, summer is literally right around the corner, which is wild in and of itself. But typically during the summer, like if the little ones are up and at them, I'll go to the gym like with just the little ones and I'll leave the bigger ones at home because obviously Alex is still home so they needed something but Wolfgang hates the nursery is this thing broken which is why initially it was such a dilemma getting back to the gym anyway because he literally just he, he hates it I don't know what to tell you he hates it and honestly there's not many things in life that he does enjoy other than me <laughs> me and water honestly if he's ever fussy and we're in a situation where we're able to we just add water that's like a go-to, just add water. Bath, outside, hose, sprinkler system, water balloons, a bucket, <laughs> anything. And that boy is like instantly a different human being. So anyway, it's getting me thinking about summertime and what I'm gonna do during the summer. Man, I don't know. You guys have summer plans? Oh my gosh, speaking of summer plants, I don't know why I'm trying to find a spot for the brush in the laundry room. I should probably just put it where it belongs. Speaking of summer plants, we've been trying to figure out what we're going to do for the summer. We normally do beach and then we have an Orlando trip for a few days. And so we're thinking like, well, what are we gonna do in Orlando? Typically we only go to Disney like every third year because um, the price is outrageous. And so we're wondering like, oh, what are we going to do this year in Orlando? Because honestly, there are a lot of things to do in Orlando. Well, anyway, I found randomly online i'm looking for a hanger how sad is this i have too many clothes i found online that they have this titanic experience okay and last year i was in chicago i randomly found it and it was like in chicago and so i was watching a few videos on it and i thought oh okay well i wonder where it is this year like me just you know just curious guess where it is Orlando Florida and I was like oh my gosh it's like in one location for one year and what are the chances it's in Orlando this year so I said you know what we have to do it right we have to it's not a matter of like if when how it's a matter of when when? I don't know what it's in a matter of, but it's a matter of urgency, okay? <laughs> so we were looking up the tickets and oh my gosh, I'm like so pumped to see this place. I don't know if it's good for kids, but like you can dine, you can have the whole dining experience. I haven't looked up ticket prices. It might cost as much as Disney, but honestly for me, I feel like it'll be just as fun. So have you heard of it? I am like ugh, pumped beyond belief, so... Hopefully that's on our list of things to do. And then of course we always ask the kids like, oh, what do you want to do in Orlando? So the bigger kids of course said that they wanted to do Wonderworks. That's like a given every year. It's literally their favorite place on planet earth. Avelina had part of her birthday party there last year. It's like so crazy how much they love this place. We're 
thinking of obviously other things to do there too. Honestly seems kind of weird that we're already planning like summer vacation kind of stuff. Oh, that's dirty, dirty. Do you guys have the, anything planned for the summer? We're just trying to make it fun. They've got a couple of summer camps, like, you know, week long summer camp or whatever. But you know what I did yesterday? I met up with a realtor. Mm hmm I did. Very last minute, Alex called me and was like, hey, I thought I was gonna meet him tomorrow, but turns out he is there right now. Can you go? Because Alex wasn't anywhere near, and I said, uh, okay, what? So apparently, Alex has been looking for places, like to Airbnb. Do you guys do Airbnbs? I've never before, so I don't know anything about it. But I did end up going to this house. I don't know if you'd be interested to see it. There's this really sweet house. So I was wondering, like, maybe you want to kick it old school and go house hunting again? I don't know what's going to come of it. I think he's just, like, mulling over the idea of doing something like this. Definitely interesting. What are your thoughts? Because i got a lot happening around here. Alex is always thinking of a hundred things too. Like remember last year we were thinking about a pool and well that's not happening because oh my gosh it costs almost as much as a house to build a pool. Hence we are without a pool and probably will be for the next five years. Going back to the old days, here's the outside. I actually really like the brick. This, that's an addition, we'll see. I, we, he said he thinks it was the garage but they converted it for more space. This is living room. Let me clean my lens. Such a sweet living room. And then right off to the left here is this built-in. It's like a 1960s style house, which I absolutely adore of that kind of character. Here's the kitchen. I mean, it's a kitchen. Not my favorite. I've definitely seen worse. So I think it's really nice. And then the dining room is super large. And I mean, it doesn't have to be a dining room. It could be an eat-in kitchen. These doors, I'm pretty sure, are original to the house. I was helping the realtor lock up and I was like, oh my gosh, is this gonna hold the lock? It was really funny. Uh, so obviously like some things need updating like the sliding glass doors. And then I found this really nice linen closet with the shelving inside, maybe could be used as a pantry. You'll see in a little bit, we see where another pantry could be. This, I thought, was there a fireplace there? Is that an accent wall? What's happening? Is it real brick? No, it's just like a decor piece for the wall. You could just rip it down. The bathroom is pretty nice. The size of it, you know, what it offers and, you know, needs a little bit of updating. But again, I've seen worse. The floors, obviously, everything could always use an update. But if we were to get it as it is, it's actually not so bad. The closet is pretty big. And then moving to the other side of the house, it's a split floor plan. So there's another linen closet here. So plenty of storage. I feel like this house has more storage than my house. And then um, the second bathroom, pedestal stink, sink, not my favorite because of, you know, where are you going to put stuff? And then this tiny little room, you know, and actually the closet here is an addition. So I'm not sure what this room was before. If it was classified as a bedroom, I mean, it was built in the 60s, so maybe they had a wardrobe instead. Um, apparently, that is just ants, so not as bad as I thought. Oh my gosh, is that mold? No, just needs a little cleaning and maybe some sealant in there to make sure the ants don't come back. And then this right here was, uh, the realtor was telling me, is an add-on. This used to be the garage. And they just converted it. So I don't know if that's considered an add-on or just a conversion. I don't really know. But here it is. Nice size bedroom or bonus room, playroom. I think officially it's a bedroom because it does have a closet and a window. And that's all you need to have a bedroom. And um, the laundry room was right off there too. And it's actually a really nice size laundry closet. You know, if you're asking me, like that's a pretty good size laundry closet because I've had smaller. <laughs> and then over here is a mudroom-ish area off of that lanai that we just saw. And maybe at one time it was a carport, I'm unsure. But all of this cabinet space, like the built-in cabinets, adds such a value. Lots of storage, lots of pantry space right off of the kitchen. I feel like that's really, really nice to have. And then I'm going to bring you outside so you can see the luxurious backyard obviously the pavement needs a little work maybe add some pavers or something but again as is add a rug add some furniture and you'll barely even notice the discolored cement you know but here is the backyard oasis just 
This is what Florida living is all about. This backyard, so amazing, so beautiful, very spacious. It's on a pond, which is always nice to look out and see any kind of water anytime you're in Florida. The dock is a little decrepit, <laughs> so that'll have to be dealt with. Um, I don't think we're getting this if you're really wondering, but it was fun to go view it and like daydream about something. So maybe something that will happen in the far future. <laughs> well, I came upstairs to replenish our movie time snacks and the drawers just full of snacks. Oh, that's leftover Easter candy. The kids, you know, some kids take advantage, but some kids are pretty good about it. So. I grabbed a bunch of snacks from my pantry and I'm just going to, uh, I don't know, fill up these containers. And fill them up I did with a bunch of snacks that I just raided my pantry with. Obviously a lot of them I had just gotten from Thrive Market. The kids, it's such a nice thing, obviously, for them. I mean, I would like it if I, if I was playing with my friends and I wanted a snack and I had a couple of drawers full of the goodies. And I recently got this box of chocolates off, uh, where did I get them from? Costco. And they were on clearance. They were like clearanced out. And I thought, wow, I'm never going to find this price again. I only put in, what, like two, four, six, eight, ten? Seems like a lot when I say it. But it's like half the box. <laughs> and I didn't want to overflow it because obviously I think those are the first ones that the kids are going to gravitate towards. And I don't want them to overdo it. Some kids overdo it and some don't. And there's that, especially when we have guests over and they just, you know, gorge. Not only that, but it's great for movie nights too. We have movie nights often up there on the second floor of our house. Up there on the second floor. And what's the last one we did? Uh, Parent Trap. That was a great one. And obviously the one with Lindsay Lohan. I grew up watching... I mean, really both grew up depending on what stage of my childhood, but I grew up watching the, well, you know what? Now I question if it's the original or not. The one, you know, the, the original, the one I'm thinking of, don't you, don't you know the one I'm thinking of? If there's a one before that, I am unaware of it. But Lindsay Lohan is like the queen of recreating movies. She did that, Freaky Friday, Herbie, The Love Bug, something like that. There's probably another one or two, but Man, I'm just so glad she's making a comeback. I'm enjoying it. But here are the movie snacks for our convenience. Well, well, well. It's the that time of night. Time to make dinner. Night for dinner. I knew I was going to do something taco related, but I don't want to make tacos because that always turns into chimichangas. And that always turns into me individually making chimichangas, taking everyone's order. And that's just not the life that I'm about. I want it to be simple, easy, streamlined, quick, and delicious. Is that too much to ask? So I think I'm gonna throw together one of my favorite taco casseroles. I don't know what it's actually called. It's just a bunch of taco stuff. I've made this recipe my own over the years that I've made it. Oh my gosh, it's a madhouse, it's a zoo. It's really simple no matter how you throw it together, which is the best way to make dinner, throwing things together. So let's do that real quick. And it's made, like you can throw it together in a casserole dish and make it and it'll be ready to go. So I think this is everything, I say, with a grain of salt. Obviously I need ingredients to make the cornbread. I thought about doing like tortillas in between all of the meat mixture, but I don't know, I like it this way. So cornbread, onion, meat, and then I have Rotel tomatoes, black beans, corn, and red enchilada sauce. And then I'll do my famous taco seasoning, which while we're here, I should really take a moment for my spice cabinet. Like this is, I, I don't even know what's in here. I mean, I do, but I have to like sift through and find it. Like how often am I reaching for this? Especially since it's still in the box that it came in. I really missed out on these during the holidays. Okay, so I'll put the, like this kind of stuff can go in my big pantry. It, it's not something that I reach for on the daily. But anyway, this is my homemade taco seasoning. I made it in a recent video and uh, let's get cooking. Minimal prep, I'm telling you, like even if you wanted to omit the onion, it would make it that much easier. But you guys know how much I love onions. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a vegetable. I'm gonna throw the meat in here. I just have ground turkey. And I'm gonna cook the onions right along with it. I'm making buttermilk again for the cornbread. So I just have some milk and then I'm gonna add the lemon again. Once the meat is all cooked, I add in drained and one can of black beans drained. I also have a can of enchilada sauce I'm throwing in. And I typically do salsa, whatever salsa I have in the fridge, but I also have 
Rotel, diced Rotel, that works with green chili. And then some of my homemade taco seasoning. I'm just gonna throw that in here. You know, cumin, paprika, chili powder, onion powder, garlic, salt, pepper, that kind of thing. You could do this with chicken too, that'd be good. And then I have some cheese. I'm just gonna dump that in, it's the rest of the bag. I think I have another bag in there, I hope, because I also have to top it with cheese. All right, that's good. I'm gonna throw the cornbread together. I use the crusties mix because honestly, it's literally the best thing I've ever tasted. It's the honey kind, honey cornbread. I just followed the recipe on the back of the box. So one egg, two thirds cup of milk, buttermilk, and then one third cup of oil. And yes, I finally bought some oil. And then just mix it together until it's combined. And then to assemble the casserole dish, I'm just gonna grease a pan. Then I'm gonna dump the meat mixture into the pan and then top it with the cornbread mixture. Try to do an even layer of this and then spread it out. And cook it in the oven. I don't know, I have mine at 375 for probably 30 minutes. Wow, so... <laughs> There was a part, I'm laughing, there's a part of this, I forgot to put cheese on it before I cooked it, so it had like probably five, 10 minutes left and I just threw a bunch of cheese on there. And in the middle there was a goopy part with a bunch of cheese. So when we were cutting into it, I thought, oh, it's undercooked. So I threw it back in the oven, even though it was probably just the melted cheese on top, which I thought was undercooked cornbread. Anyway, so threw it back in the oven for like 10, 15 more minutes, my mistake, and uh, it came out looking a little crusty. It's a madhouse out there. I have to clean the kitchen again after dinner. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market to get 30% off of your groceries. What? Screaming deal if I ever heard of one. Thrivemarket.com slash the wads will get you there and my link is in the description box. I'll see you next time. Bye.